Of all the videos that I have shown so far that are experimental and in some cases meant for emergency use, this is the most extreme. This is an example of a uh, Brunton Vesta stove. This is meant primarily, actually it's meant only, for uh, LP gas use, these little canisters that attach like this. But let's suppose for the sake of argument, uh, you've run into a problem. You've run out of canister fuel and you're still hungry and you'd like to be able to use a stove like this with liquid fuel. I'm going to show an example of what this is like. This is all experimental. Brunton totally disowns me about this. Um, this does not require any kind of a pump or anything. I'm going to be showing you how this could be done with some syringes. Now, it's unlikely that you will be carrying these syringes with you unless you are that far sighted, but one never knows. So, the first thing I'm going to show you is this uh, from an earlier video that I had done on this chimney technique. This is just a pop can that I've cut some slots in so that it can now be positioned over the, um, the stove. And so, I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that. I'm just going to um, position this so that it, it, it fits. And this helps to contain some of the heat during the preheating stage where I use some alcohol for that. Because this is not meant for um, for liquid fuel, it doesn't have a priming pan, so I have a little bitty thing here that I'm going to go ahead and use in place. I'll just put a 1cc of alcohol, this is denatured alcohol, into the pan here and just slip it under here. And then um, what I'm going to then do is I have a syringe here that has about 13 cc's of Coleman fuel, not kerosene, Coleman fuel, and I've drawn it up with this blunt needle, and I'm going to take this off, and I've got about 5 cc's of air in it. Now this is of no use unless you have this. This is an adapter that has a, lure th uh, a lindle thread on this side, it's got some threads on the inside that allow this adapter, which is for lure type syringes, to be used. And this will attach to the place that normally a canister would go. And you just put a light, a light amount of force against it to seal it against the O-ring. You have the control valve open all the way. And so now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put in, uh, well first of all I need to attach this, so you just basically just screw this little this syringe on, it doesn't have to be very tight, and I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit of fuel just to put some in the line. This is not meant to prime it, it's just to make sure that there's some fuel in the line. And then I'm going to go ahead and light the, the alcohol. I may put a little bit more fuel in here just to see if we can get a little bit of assistance. Okay, already? Okay. So already we've gotten some um, some of the Coleman fuel in here, which is fine. Uh, it'll help to uh, improve the starting characteristics of this. Now the problem with these pop cans is they don't tolerate a lot of high heat. So you don't want to get too aggressive with this as far as trying to... Um, activate the burner with this pop can. It'll literally melt. And I'm pressing a little bit on the syringe just to see if I can get some semblance of a burner action. And it does seem to be in fact working. So I'm going to go ahead and remove... Oh, you can see that it really does fall apart. And now let me see, now I'm applying a little bit more pressure here. And again, I have the control valve all the way open. This generator is not optimal for liquid fuel. It's designed for LP gas and so the, the uh, it, it's, not, it, it's not going to generate, at least initially, enough heat to make this absolutely blue flame type thing. But as it heats up, it'll improve. But at this point, you could actually put a pot on 
And again, this is meant as an emergency procedure. I would not uh, suggest doing this on a routine basis. I'm applying a little bit more pressure here to the syringe. And a little bit. Now, usually, LP gas jets are pretty uh, are pretty wide. Uh, many of them are in the 0 0.45 millimeter range, and so even if you had an adequate generator, it would be somewhat yellowish because it's a very rich mixture. Um, on the Brunton Bantam stove for gasoline use. It has a 0. Point, uh, I think 35 millimeter jet for that. I can't say that I know what what the jet size is for this. This is going to be starting up the Brunton Vesta. This is an LP gas uh, burning stove. I'm just going to be demonstrating how this looks when it is um, using liquid fuel instead of LP gas. But this time it's going to be used with a pressurized fuel bottle instead of uh, hand pressure. That's one cc of denatured alcohol that's in the priming pan. And I've got this little homemade chimney with a pop bottle. And um, I'll let this run for about 30 seconds or so to try to heat this thing up. Now this uh, pop can is nothing like the titanium. It uh, it falls apart very easily, but as an emergency procedure, it would be useful for at least a couple, I suppose, a couple of uh, uses before it finally bites the dust. All right, let me see if I can get this thing going. I'm going to put a little bit of fuel in the line. And let's see if I can get This is probably going to flare up some, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I just want to get it going. Oh, it's a bad idea to be downwind when you get one of these. Now, this is going to take a while probably to warm up. But again, the, the issue here is I want a comparison to see what it's like to have uh, a fuel bottle providing the pressure versus hand pressure. I think my hand injection worked better than this. I'm increasing the uh, opening on the fuel valve. You can audibly hear the hissing, which is typical for these diffusing type um, burners. I'm opening it up a little bit more. Now, when you go back to the other video where I'm doing this by hand, you can see that this yellowness that is uh, part of the flame is still present here. So it doesn't really seem to matter much whether you have a pressurized fuel bottle or not. You're going to get, uh, this probably has a, good, a larger orifice. I'm gonna put some more uh, pressure on the bottle That's another 20 pumps. That, I think, is about as good as it's going to get. So clearly, uh, these stoves, while they may operate to 
to some extent, with liquid fuel, if they have an orifice, especially a jet, that is set for LP gas, which is usually a larger orifice compared to liquid fuel, you're going to have a very rich uh, flame here. That, in combination with the suboptimal generator, is going to produce a much more yellow flame. That's about going to be, I think, I think I've gotten the information that I need. I probably will hook up <coughs> a fuel canister to this just to blow it out as it were. Also just to show an AV comparison of what it's like using the uh, LP gas. This is now hooked up to the um, LP gas canister that you can see. And we'll see what the difference is in the flame. Well, as you can see, you can't, there's no visible yellowness at all. That is, that's wide open. You can barely see anything. So clearly this jet is designed for LP gas, which is not surprising, this is LP gas. So you'd have to really be hungry to try to use this with um, liquid fuel.